As much as I would like to be cutting, grinding, and welding on this thing, some critical parts have not arrived yet that would allow me to make some really important decisions on this build. But there's still a ton of stuff to do that needs to get done, even without these parts. So today we're going to be installing this 8 gang multifunction switch panel. This is the same one that I have in the Jeep. This is just the newer version of it. We've got our control module here, all of our stickers, our wires, our connectors and everything. And then we have our switch panel right here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to install the switch panel. And uh, you can see the dash. I already have this dash out because the 4x4 switch up here the solders I think are broken in it, so I'm going to try and resolder it or I'm going to have to replace it. I already tried two different switches and they're very intermittent, so I think I've taken the circuit board apart and it's just I'm going to resolder it. Hopefully that will fix it. But anyways, uh, I found this right here was the best spot to attach it because I'm going to put a double din radio right here with a reverse camera. I don't want it up here on the dash or like anywhere up here, so this seemed like the uh, easiest way when I'm sitting in here, there's no, it's not even close to my leg, plenty of room. I could put it down there as well. And there was also two holes already drilled in almost the exact spot. So I only had to drill one hole in here because there already was one there. So let's figure out how we're going to mount these. I have a pretty uh, cool solution under the hood. So under the hood, we got where our intake was right here, our intake box where a filter air filter was right there. And I'm going to run basically a generic three inch cone filter that's about yay big that's going to go on this tube right here. So I'm going to utilize this intake box right here. I'm going to be able to mount this guy inside of here. I'm going to be able to mount this guy inside of here. And I'm also going to mount all of the winch controller stuff of the new Harbor Freight winch that's over there. It's going to go on this thing. All the controller is going to be remote and it's going to be mounted inside this box as well. I've already taken out this little knobby tube right here. So I got a nice little hole right here that my battery wires and everything can go through. I have battery positive right here, ignition power, fuse box right here. I got everything I need to run this. A couple things we'll need to do on this because as you can see, this is kind of floppy around here and we're going to be putting this it's not heavy but putting weight in there and uh, so i found this little jobby right here so we're going to drill through this attach this where this little weenie nut will bolt down and hold this solid right here so this is still a little bit floppy even though i added this it's because the mount right here just kind of snaps into the the core support here and it's kind of floppy so i think what i'll do when i make this plate that goes on the top i'll make a little tab that goes up and then bolts to this guy right here because this is solid So here's the box. It is complete. The uh, weather seal that I had is way thicker and bigger than I really wanted, but it's literally all I had. It's junk I had laying around that was covered in dust, so I'm just reusing it. So it's a little thicker than I wanted, but it is working. We got our winch controller right here. I originally was going to install this switch and put it up in here, and this turns the wireless on and off on the winch controller. And to be honest, I have not touched this switch on my winch in three years, I leave the wireless on and I never turn it off. I don't touch it. So all I have to do is just turn the remote on. It says you're supposed to turn it off, but it literally been three years and it's, it's 
still fine. So I'm going to save myself a ton of time trying to make an exact square hole to fit this in and I'm just going to run it inside of here, probably put a little piece of tape on it so it doesn't accidentally switch. Um, but other than that, everything is inside of there. I don't have everything tightened down fully yet, but let me show you what is inside. So inside we have our 60 amp breaker. We got our aux beam box. Like I said, it's not fully tightened down. All of these bolts and screws and everything is just from my uh, junk drawer pile. Even this bracket that I used right here is a uh, intake mount from my old Subaru. I keep all kinds of mounts and little brackets and stuff. Here's the other side of it. And I'll probably keep this side too, throw it in my scrap bin and everything. I didn't buy anything to build this basically. So we have our winch controller. This is actually the old one off of my, if you guys remember my Badland winch where the uh, top thing cracked, everything still worked fine, but the housing cracked, they sent me a new one. And I still have, I'm using all of the old components for mock-up. We have our wireless controller is right here. And I'm going to leave this, you know, kind of loose because I want to be able to take this piece off. I have to, in order to take this off, I have to lift this up and I can't do it with one hand, but it does fish out of there and it's going to be super easy. The wires will come through here and go up into here through the backside and right here. Everything is exactly the way I want it to be. And uh, let's go ahead and install it and we'll completely wire it in and we will test it out. So I got everything hooked up and I have this one rock light uh, hooked up to the control panel. So let's turn the ignition on, see if everything works. So ignition is on. We got our lights here. I don't have any stickers on it yet because I don't know what they're going to be yet. Um, so we've got red lights turning on and this one is the rock light. Okay, switch panel is working the way that I want it to. Okay guys, that's gonna do it for this video. I have a ton of parts that are rolling in right now. So we have fabrication and building and we got a lot of stuff. You guys might get, I can't promise anything, but you might get three videos this week. If I bust my butt, you might get three videos. So let me show you quickly what we got going on and the parts we got uh, I have and what I'm gonna be working on in the next couple weeks. So the couple hours a day I have after work, I'm pulling the IFS out so I have this side done. As you can see here, front bumper is off. We have, this is gonna be the base of the winch mount. So I'm gonna be custom making a full bumper and winch mount based off of this worn plate. Went to the metal yard yesterday and I have some quarter inch plate here that's gonna be part of the, uh, the front bumper winch. I got 20 feet of inch and three quarter 120 wall DOM. That's gonna be front and rear bumper and who knows what else. And then these are the Exofab DIY rock sliders. So this one is something I'm probably gonna get. This will be your next Sunday's video will be these rock sliders because I decided how I'm gonna mount the suspension even though I don't have the parts yet. I decided I'm just gonna go and start welding on it because it's gonna be a lot of welding. And also, I have a video to make on this Badland jack. I haven't had time to even open it yet, so I will be working on that in the next couple of days. So if you want to see something specific for me to test on this, let me know down in the comments, and I will do my best to put it in there. And if you guys want to follow me on social media, I am at MuddyBeards4x4. We got a website, MuddyBeards4x4.com. You can get shirts like this guy right here, stickers, stuff like that. Help support the channel. Till next time, guys, we will see you in the garage.